And thanks to Daniel. Well, we're keeping it. We're keeping a busy chaise long tonight, so he's going to stay to meet my next two guests. A matchless teller of painful tales of life and love and romance, Edna O'Brien. And a man who has graced us with his wit and erudition before now. He's done it all, from Monty Python through Cynthia Payne's personal services to Eric the Viking. And now he's, he's taken to the poetry. A little tome entitled The Curse of the Vampire Socks. He's direct from his Smelly Socks tour. Terry Jones. <laughs> Trick to play yeah. on poor old Harry, was it? Yeah, I don't know about all this thing about not doing your own stunts. I think it's great doing your own stunts, especially in the sex scenes. I always make sure I do. <laughs> you don't. You do. You do even stunts you're not involved in, don't this you? This is true. Yes, this was my accident. Though. Have you ever played a romantic hero? <laughs> no, no, I haven't actually. It's, all, I, it's always been an ambition of mine, though, to be a to be a sex object. Um, <laughs> but I. I've only, actually, I've only ever achieved it once, actually. Steady. <laughs> oh, Daniel. Oh, no. Oh, no. I think you've no, made a new friend. I don't think so. No, I've, I've only ever achieved it once, actually. That was um, for, for a fairly long period. I was quite a powerful sex object for our dog. <laughs> I mean, she's a Jack Russell. She's quite good looking, actually. Was, uh, she's a bitch, you know, so it's mm. nothing kinky or anything like no. that. But it, it, was, it wasn't very complimentary, actually. You, I think it was more to do with the angle you had your leg when you're sitting down. You know, if you got the, your leg at the wrong angle, you'd see this look come over the dog's face. You know. And when, when you weren't looking, you know, suddenly she'd pounce and she'd be on yeah. there with the paws like that, like that, you know, yeah. shake her off. And she'd be on your other leg, you know. Yeah, it's a start. It's, yeah, sexy start. Are you sure? Are you sure this was a female dog? Well, I know, that's what we always worried about her, actually. Yeah. It was a bit, uh, but she was, definitely, yes. Well, you see everybody sitting around and adoring him like that, you know. <laughs> Knew she'd been at it. It was worse, actually, it was worse than dinner parties, really. You're sitting around there having dinner or something. You see, suddenly see one of the guests going, oh, oh, like that. You look down, there's the dog under the table. <laughs> <laughs> oh, would that there were more people like that. Well, I like that. <laughs> He's touching me. Yeah. Uh, look, Cover me. Would you be any good? Oh, would you be any good at the seduction? Daniel's already shown us his mastery. No, I think I think the trouble is I think uh, I think you know. Well, I know most 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 ladies I'm ever with they will laugh at me. <laughs> of course, when yeah. you when you see scenes like uh -huh. this that we have for you to delight in now, it's not really surprising. Hang on. <laughs> what you got then? <laughs> You've probably got free spam for the rest of your life after that. Well, actually, no, we never heard anything from spam. But about ten years later, I was reading in an advertising magazine, it was talking about spam, the, the ailing company that, whose fortunes were picked up by the sketch in Monty Python. So <laughs> we obviously did them a lot of good. Well, yeah. <laughs> a little happiness. Now, I mean, when you think of... There's no reason, really, why you should sell yourself short, but you think of the unlikely sex symbols that have grown up over the... Yes, I mean, John Cleese. Yeah. He became a sex symbol after Fish Called One. Yeah, good lord. Yeah. Do you find that encouraging? It does, it is, yes, it is, very encouraging. He's taller than me, though. Um, but Dudley Moore is smaller. That's true, yes. There's hope for me yet, mm. even if it's just for dogs. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, it, I, I've just seen the socks here. Are they, oh, yeah. You're on your smelly socks tour. Well, yes. What, what, I shouldn't show these, really. What's all that about? Well, it's the, uh, there's a book called The Curse of the Vampire Socks, which is a book of uh, verse for children I, uh, I wrote. And I've just been published in Puffin Books. Oh. And I mean, does it mean with the smelly socks tour, you walk around and, and show people your socks? socks? Well, I, I did put these on because it was a smelly socks tour, but I think that's just because of the name, you know. Do you, do you change your socks with any kind of frequency? Um, well, I change my underpants more often. Yeah. How often? How often would you change your underpants? Oh, two, three times a day sometimes. <laughs> Depends on what I'm doing, of course. Yeah. But um, sometimes just um, once. on a whim. <laughs> on a whim, yes. Yeah. I changed them today before I came here. Did as a matter you? Of fact. I clean ones on. No, no, you? never mind. <laughs> never mind. What about the socks? Do what? The socks. Oh would well. Would you change your socks every day? Well, would you? No. Oh, oh come not on. every day. No. Huh? No. Would you, uh, Daniel, you're a fastidious every person, day. although you've got every, a super stain on your below. Now, wait a minute. Now, come it must on. have happened upstairs. <laughs> messy. <laughs> well, but would you, how often do you change the socks? Uh, every day. Twice a day sometimes, because we, we rehearse. No, no wonder you're a sex socks. symbol. <laughs> I'm clean. That's probably what I'm, I'm doing wrong, you know. Are you, are you particular about your appearance? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. 
yes, yes. <laughs> As you can see, yes. Are you a man that... that um... No, I, I'm not a bit sloppy, really. I, I, I don't really sort of expect to look too good, so I just sort of take a low profile. But this is wrong thinking, isn't really? it, Danny? Look what Daniel has managed to do with... with not much material. <laughs> you have a very handsome chest. Try you know. making it the hard way. Yeah. But I mean, you do. You, you take care. You, 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 I would, you wouldn't wear I like clothes. Mm. I like, mean, yeah. Mm. But uh, I wouldn't be without them. Really. Casual. Or <laughs> I would. <laughs> he would. <laughs> he, he should be without them in this play, but he has um, to wear them because it's a, on oh, the Oh, these stage. clothes are beautiful in this play. Yeah. Well, that's right. They are. Yeah. And the, that yeah. particular period. Certainly, if the Wonderful play and the film are anything to go by, Unless there's an look, awful no. long time spent preening, isn't it? Uh, yes, and I don't know how they how they had all those affairs. I mean, there's a lot to put on and take off. And, yeah. <laughs> they I mean, probably they, took all day, you know, jumping they, in uh, uh, off balconies, and they didn't waste time and, changing their socks all no, day. You they know, didn't change was, anything. No, no. I heard. <laughs> well, I think those are very cute. Thank you. Yes. And, and why why did you decide to? I mean, you do write children's books about yeah, your activities. Yeah. Why, why burst into poetry? Well, it was just a suggestion. The uh, nice people at Puffin said, why not write some uh, verse? And it felt like, I mean, I'd always fancied myself as a poet, actually, ever since I was about seven or something. Um, I'd been writing poetry, scribbling it away. So um, I thought, well, this is a chance. I'm do you remember any of your early works? Well, as a matter of fact, I have one of them here. As Good as Lord. <laughs> Good <laughs> Lord. Well. <laughs> Well, the only thing is, I looked at it, actually. They, they, they asked me, would you like to come and read your first poem on television? But yeah. the first poem I ever wrote at age six, but it's not in joined up writing, actually. You wrote so. it in the loo paper. Yes. Yeah, so I thought I wouldn't. I've got an essay I wrote when I was seven. No, don't bother. That wouldn't know. Well, no, 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 is that, is that it? Is <laughs> that the that? essay? That, well, it's, yes, it's, yes, it's called When I Grow Up. Go on, then. When I Grow Up, is, I think I was seven when I wrote this. Um, when I Grow Up, uh, ever since I was five, I've, won, I've been hopping to be an actor. I simply love acting. It's wizard, like the Wizard of Oz. Uh, sometimes I think of being a musician. Schubert came from Australia. He came to England and wrote the song, The Roses Shine Above the Garden Gate. Beethoven said it was the unfinished symphony. But I'm satisfied with acting. It's much better than the other two things. I'll tell you about my future. First, I intend to have a big house and have a bow tie and a black long tail jacket and striped trousers for best when I intend to go dancing. <laughs> but I'm not looking forward to trading or service. Personally, I hope there won't be any service, but I expect there will. But I needn't worry because I'm too young to you worry about You never the wrote this itself. <laughs> When I'm 14 is the time to worry about life or business. But I've got to now, while I'm young, I've got the chance. It's time to worry now about business. I really mean service, isn't it? How... Oh, I can't read that bit. I'm young because I'm seven, aren't I? Or something. <laughs> what a lovely piece of work. Anyway. Young, young essay. Even then, the burgeoning talent. Yes, I don't know who kept them. I think it was my grandma kept them. And these... these um, pieces of poetry that you've written, oh, yes. they're not, they won't really necessarily, from the, the little look I've had through the book, they won't necessarily meet with the wholesale approval from teachers and parents. No, no, I got censored in the book, actually. Yes, one of the, uh, one of the uh, book clubs insisted that uh, I couldn't rhyme sod with God. I mean, it was just the, 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 the verse went something like, what's that, the Colonel? So the Colonel got real angry and said, what's that, you silly sod? At which Bill's drawing rose and said, well, I can't, you see, I'm God. And they said, you can't rhyme sod and God. And I said, well, they do rhyme, sod rhymes with God. And they said, well, you can't do that. So I had to change it to Claude. So, <laughs> Oh. Have, you got a, have you got a verse from the book? Well, I have, yes, uh, in my other pocket. <laughs> um, they wouldn't allow me to bring the book on. I'm not sure why. So they well, well, we have certain standards <laughs> here. This is called Horace. It's called Horace. Uh, much to his mum and dad's dismay, Horace ate himself one day. He didn't stop to say his grace. He just sat down and ate his face. <laughs> hey, we can't have this, his dad declared. If that lad's ate, he shall be shared. But even as he spoke, they saw Horace eating more and more. First his leg and then his thighs, his arms, his nose, his hair, his eyes. Stop him, someone, mother cried. Those eyeballs would be better fried. But all too late, and now the silly had even started on his willy. No, oh, <laughs> child, the father mourns. You could have deep fried that with prawns. Parsley and some tartar sauce. But H was on his second course. His liver and his lights and lung, his ears, his neck, his chin, his tongue. To think I raised him from the cot and now he's gonna scoff the lot. His mother cried, what shall we do? What's left won't even make a stew. And as she wept, her son was seen to eat his head, his heart, his spleen. And there he lay, a boy no more, just a stomach on the floor. But nonetheless, since it was his, they ate it. That's what haggis is. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
up. It is, I can... It's absolutely the kind of thing that... What, what age group are you aiming that at? Well, I think it's sort of my age group, really, yeah, but... Um, the, the audience age yeah. group, yeah. yeah. That's all right, sort of 10 up with us. What is it about words like Willie that, that cause... <laughs> cause grown-ups to fall about? It's very odd, isn't it? I mean... We were doing a children's... You know what Willie means, do you, mm. Daniel? I got it. It's yeah. where you got hit, the, um, well, nearly where you got hit the other day. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, Up a bit. We, yeah, we were doing a, a kids' program called Do Not Adjust Your Set, and uh, we were doing... It was all about euphemisms for going to the lavatory. And we were using things that you say to children, like, you know, doing ones and doing twos and all that kind of thing. And they said, they said, we can't say that. You can't say that, because there are children watching this program. We said, but that's the euphemisms that people use for children. Yeah. <laughs> Wouldn't worry. The, the Americans are very sensitive about this particular aspect, aren't they? Oh, yeah. We're, well, you Use know. all sorts of euphemisms, like we say the loo or the whatever, but... but it's yeah, we were founded by the Puritans. Yeah. I just, just saw the crucible the other night. Good production. You go to the laboratory in the bathroom, which is really... You know, bathroom. <laughs> yes, that's true. Yeah, no, we can't show as many things on our television as you show here in the way of... You know. Um... <laughs> It's true. We're a little backward. Yeah. Really. But not, not in sexual things. It's just lavatorial things that you are fit behind. Yeah, you can't rhyme sod with God. No. no. You can't do that here, <laughs> I Actually, my next guest has had a problems, too, with censorship in, in her early days, as you did, with, with movies with Python and all the rest. So please stay with us, Terry Jones.